Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Napakabuti ng Panginoon sa ating umaga ngayon. Amen. Nakita Amen. natin kabutihan ng ating Panginoon. Amen. Kaya nais natin siyang awitan at padama ang ating pagmamahal sa kanyang Amen. harapan. Amen. Amen. Sige po tayo umawit. Okay, gandang pagbastan tayo nag-aawitan. Amen. Sige po tayo po malakpak. Pagsaya po tayo sa ating Panginoon. Kahit umuulan, kailangan natin pumasok sa kanyang tahanan. Okay, gandang pagbasan tayo nag-aawitan. Pumapasok sa tahanan niya, may Tayo nag-aawitan Kung ang pasok sa tahanan niya May kagalakan At doon ay nagpupuri Walang hanggang kasiyahan Sa Diyos na nabubuhay Magpakailan pa man O kay gandang pagmasan Tayo nag-aawitan Dakilang biyaya nga po, Panginoon. Lahat kami ay yung pinalaya mula sa bihag ng kasalan. Dakilang biyaya kami pinalaya mula sa bihag ng kasalan. Sustakila 
magsasaya Jesus papupurihan ka Ikaw lamang ang aming pag-asa Ang lahat ay magsasabi Ang lahat ay luluhum Jesus ikaw lamang ang pag-asa Ang lahat ay magsasaya Jesus, papupurihan ka, ikaw lamang ang aming pag-asa. Ang lahat ay magsasabi, ang lahat ay luluhun. Jesus, ikaw lamang ang Panginoon. Ang lahat ay magsasaya. Ang lahat ay magsasaya. Jesus, papupurihan. Yes, O oh Lord, napakaligaya nga po ng aming puso, O God. Patuloy kami magsasaya sa iyo, Panginoon. Dahil ikaw po ang aming Diyos na walang katulad. Wala kang katulad nga po, Panginoon. Hallelujah, Jesus, O oh God. Lord, patuloy ang aming awitan sa iyong harapan, O oh Diyos. Hallelujah. sa mundo di kayang ilarawan na kadakilaan mo kulang ang lahat ng tula kulang maging mga salita upang ihayag ang kabutihan mo in koma lahat ng Awit sa mundo Di kayang iladawan na Kadakilaan mo Kulang ang lahat ng tula Kulang maging mga salita Upang ihayag Ang kabutihan mo Wala kang katulad Wala na wala kang katulad, wala nang papantay sa'yo. Ikaw ang Diyos noong paman, maging ngayon at kailanman. Sa habang panahon, wala kang katulad, wala kang katulad, Panginoon. Wala nang higit sa'yo. Wala kang katulad, wala nang papantay sa'yo. Ikaw ang Diyos noong paman, maging ngayon at kailanman. Sa habang panahon, wala kang katulad, wala kang katulad, Panginoon. Wala kang katulad, wala nang hihigit pa sa'yo. Wala kang katulad, Panginoon. Wala nang papatay sa iyo. Ikaw ang Diyos noong paman, maging ngayon at kailanman. Sa habang panahon, wala kang katulad. Wala kang katulad. Wala nang higit sa iyo. Wala kang katulad, wala nang papantay sa'yo. Ikaw ang Diyos noong paman, maging ngayon at kailanman. Sa habang panahon, wala kang katulad. Sa habang panahon, wala kang katulad. Sa habang panahon, wala kang katulad. 
Pag-ibig mo'y wagas at walang kapantay Sa aming puso, sa aming buhay Papulit pagsampay, iaalay At walang kapantay Sa aming puso Sa aming buhay Papunit pagsambay Iaalay Bukas noon ngayon Magpakailanman Luwalatiin ka
Nakabuti mo nga po, Panginoon. Napakatapat mo nga po sa aming mga buhay. Lord, sa patuloy namin pag uh, service na ito, O Diyos, tunay nga ang inyong kabanalan, ang inyong kapangyarihan ay patuloy po naming maranasan. Salamat po sa kagalakan, kalakasan, at kapayapaan na patuloy yung pinagkalob sa amin. At sa magbibigay ng mensahe, Panginoon, sa umagang ito, dalangin po namin na ang salita mo ang tunay na manahan sa bawat isa sa amin, O Diyos. Idobol anointing mo nga po, Panginoon, ang aming tagapagsalita sa umagang ito. Kabanalan mo, Panginoon, ang patuloy na manahan sa lugar na ito, O God. Sa tanging pangalam, Yesus. Amen. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Uh, sabi ng Panginoon, do not neglect the fellowship with your fellow or with your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Amen? And the fellowship is on Sunday services. Amen? Praise God. You are blessed. You are blessed, so much blessed. Because the Lord said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All your needs, when you seek the Lord, and when you uh, uh, seek his righteousness, ang katotohanan, ang kanyang salita, ang kanyang uh, kalooban, all your needs will be added unto you. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And uh, everyone, I know, you, are, uh, you can see already on our slides, don't leave your first love. Don't leave your first love. Huwag niyong iwanan ang una ninyong pagmamahal. Ang ating Panginoon sa ating Panginoon. When I was a new Christian that was 20 plus years ago, uh, mahilig po akong makipagdiskusyon. I was so very, uh, you know, everything that I heard every Sunday. Like, uh, when, uh, like there are people that they insist their belief, I also insist my belief. And that is what I heard from the pastor that Sunday. And one thing that I heard from pastors, that every time you are in front of other people, other belief, do not argue with them. But if you can do it, Oh, because they will, they will uh, bring you very, very far from the salvation. But if you could memorize the salvation, the teaching of salvation, the, the death of Jesus Christ, why Jesus came to earth and died on the cross of Calvary, if you know that, the message of that, you can always go back to that topic because the other belief, they will bring you far from the salvation. But if you know how to go back, you will never be lost. Amen? You will never be lost. Hallelujah. So, our topic today is don't leave your first love. Isang nagsabi kanina, isang ano, kapatiran, first love to God. Kasi may mga first love kayo dati. Hi, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May, <laughs> tawang-tawa sila. May mga first love kayo dati. Pero pinag-uusapan natin, we're talking about our first love to Jesus. Amen? 
Our first love, when we first met Jesus, when we first received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are so very excited. I was so very excited when I first received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Sunday, uh, I go home at around 9 o'clock in the evening. Monday, Tuesday, pumipili na ako ng damit ko na isusuot ko sa susunod na linggo. Wednesday, nakahanda na ang damit ko sa linggo. That's how I was so very, very... Uh, in love to the Lord. Monday, Tuesday, talaga naman, I, I will get all my clothes, yung mga gusto kong isuot. Talagang, ano, talagang sinusuot ko na. I was, I was in Hong Kong before. And even my employer, kasing ganda-ganda ng employer kong babae, pag ayaw niya ng suot ko, paglabas ko ng kwarto ko, ayaw niyang suot ko, your dress is not good today. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, Gusto ko pagpunta ko sa church every Sunday, maganda ako sa Lord. Hindi yung pinaghahanda ng pupunta sa party. Paghandaan mo ang para sa Panginoon. Amen? You should be very beautiful in front of the Lord, not to the other people. Beautiful inside and out. Amen? Don't say, oh, pupunta lang naman ako sa simbahan. I will just wear what is comfortable with me. Comfortable to me. And you're just wearing a Sweet pants. If you go to the White House and meet President Biden, are you going to wear the sweet pants? No. You're, the, the guys, the, the men, they're wearing uh, Americana. <laughs> they're sweet, uh, how do you call that? Suits. Okay. And the ladies, they are going to uh, dress up. Mm -hmm. Con todo makeup yan at may kilay. Kilay is my life. Diba? Hi, praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Binubuhay ko lang ang inyong umaga. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't leave your first love to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Revelation begins on a quiet Sunday morning on a lonely Greek island in the Aegean Sea. Okay, we're talking about the Revelation. The book of Revelation, who is the author of the book of Revelation? John, okay, the brother of? Amen, praise God. The book of Revelation begins on a quiet Sunday. These are according to the Bible scholars. Sunday morning on a lonely Greek island in the Aegean Sea. Aegean Sea is in the Mediterranean Sea between Europe and Asia. Okay? I'm bringing you something that we should be uh, also know about the, about the world, about the history, something like that. So, si Jan yon, si Jan. It was Jan who was that person. It sounds peaceful, but it didn't stay that way very long. He started the book of Revelation, but it was not uh, very uh, quiet and peaceful. Because in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat, sa isang iglap, the Apostle John found himself confronted with a sudden overwhelming appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was in the... Greek island of Aegean Sea, okay? And suddenly, the appearance of Jesus Christ went there. Only, this wasn't Jesus as John remembered him, strolling al along the Sea of Galilee, na, na alala ni John, na yung Jesus na nakikita niya ngayon sa kanyang harapan, ay, it was Jesus, the Jesus that he saw along the Sea of Galilee, teaching on the hillside or cradling a, a little children in his arms. This was the all-powerful, eternal son of the living God who stepped right out of heaven in great splendor and glory. So, uh, Jesus came, show himself to John in a splendor, great splendor and glory. Nagniningning ang Panginoon nung nagpakita siya kay John. Okay? In John, uh, 
probably John, you know, I'm toast. I mean, he feels so overwhelmed when you saw a very splendor, a very light, very, very bright light that is so very, uh, how do you call, amazing or overwhelming. You don't know what was that. In Revelation 1.17, it says there, When I saw him, John said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. Okay? I fell at his feet as if I were dead. So, when Jesus put his right hand to John's trembling shoulder, nanginginig si John nung nakita niya si Jesus, the Lord said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This was the same Jesus John knew and loved. So when he heard the voice of Jesus, he believed that this is the Jesus that he was with him before. And he is still had work for John to do. So Jesus came back here on earth for John because there is something Jesus had something for John to do may ipapagawa siya kay John okay Jesus made John a first century mailman giving him seven letters to deliver to seven churches in Asia and those letters touch all of our of all us this day so uh, when you go home today, if you haven't read the Bible about the seven churches, read the seven churches. So you would be able to have something in your mind what we are studying today because I cannot discuss all the seven churches here. Okay? Try to read that in the book of Revelation. And uh, in... In his letter to the church of Ephesus, we are talking about the Ephesus this time. I have this, Jesus said, I have this against you. Okay. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. Hi. Okay. But I have this complaint against you. You don't Love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Can we go back to uh, four, please? But I have this complaint against you, says the Lord. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. You don't love me. The Lord can see what is in our hearts. The Lord can see what is in our hearts. If before we are so very, very uh, fired, energetic, enthusiastic, whatever thing that we have, that every Sunday we are so excited in coming to church. How come the Lord is complaining now? But I have this complaint against you. You don't, you don't love me. Or each other as you did at first. Why, why there is a each other as you did at first? Do not neglect your fellowship with your brothers and sisters. As a family in the house, in, at our home, if you don't see your brothers and sisters, like last night, the mother was calling the son. Where are you, son? Oh, I'm coming home, says the son. You know who are talking? Si Norman hinahanap ng nanay niya. <laughs> I'm coming home. The, the mother loves him. That's why he's looking for him. And the Lord is longing for our love. Where are we now? Where are we? 
Where are we? Where is our first love to the Lord? Amen? Verse 5, can we go to verse 5 please? Verse 5. Look how far you have fallen. Tingnan ninyo kung gaano na kayo kalayo sa Panginoon. Hmm, wala kayo dito. Okay. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. Manumbalik kayo at gawin nyo ang mga ginagawa nyo noon. Nung unang nakilala ninyo ang Panginoon. Ang sabi, if you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. I, if you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand. And you know, I just, I, I, I'm just uh, asking the Lord, what is this Lord? If you don't repent, if we won't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand. What is this lampstand from its place among the churches? Well, the The Lord is talking about the church, Ephesus. But we individual, you know what is the Lord saying? The, the, the revelation of the Lord, the message of the Lord. He is saying that if you are, the Lord is using you as a music ministry, as a worship leader. And your heart, what you're doing is not aligned to the word of God. The Lord will remove you from here. And he will, of course, the God of heaven and earth, he have all the resources to bring one here to replace you. Amen? Don't ever, ever, ever boast that, oh, the music ministry cannot stand without me. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, the Lord will replace you. Understand? Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. The church in Ephesus had loved Jesus with great passion. Mahal na mahal nila si Jesus. But then as the years went by, kahit na hindi pa yung mahabang panahon, okay, when you start to drift from a love relationship with Christ, you are in the process of backsliding. Okay. When you start to drift from a love relationship with Christ, you are in the process of backsliding. Hallelujah. When you start not coming to church every Sunday, when you start saying, oh, I have something to do on Sunday, and when you start, oh, I, I, I feel like not going to church, and all the occasions first before coming on church on Sunday, that is a sign of drifting away. From the presence of God. Hallelujah. And you are in the process of backsliding. Even though you are present in the church, if your heart is not with the Lord, your heart is backslider. There is a backslider chart, uh, heart. Even you are here. If you are not paying attention to the word of God, your heart is in a state of backsliding, is in the process of backsliding. Pay attention to the word of God. Amen? Amen. It may be slow, but it is a backslide nonetheless. Okay. Uh, sinasabi natin, nandun naman ako every Sunday. Ginagawa ko naman yung mga gawain ng Panginoon. You yourself can only check this one. Are you reading the Bible? Are you praying? Praise the Lord. Dalawang nag-amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. It may be slow in the process, but still, you are drifting away from the presence of God. But if you are reading the word of God every day and every night, Sabi sa Joshua, meditate the word of the Lord day and night. As you have meditated your first love. Okay, punta tayo sa secular this time. When you fell in love with your boyfriend and your girlfriend before, oh, ay, hindi pa uso ngayon. Ang, ay, noon, sa amin, ang cellphone, hindi pa uso. Sulat. 
Naranasan ko, kuya, I, I, I experienced the sulat, the letter, pinapaabot ng mga kaklase. di ba? Doon dumada ng mga sulat noon, mga kaklase, mga kaibigan, para lang mapadali ang pagdating ng sulat because kung imimail mo, ay baka matanggap pa ng nanay mo, lagot. So, <laughs> nanay mo, tatay mo makatanggap ng sulat mo, hindi makakarating sa'yo. Sina nakaranas noon? Ay, naranasan ko yun. <laughs> Kala ninyo, naranasan ko yon sulat ko, hindi ko nakakarating sa akin. Ngayon, ang nangyari, pinapabot na lang sa kaklase ko. O, di na, nakarating. Hmm, di ba? Hmm. Ngayon, sa cellphone, we are waiting every day, looking on our cellphone, ba't kaya wala pang text? Ano? Ay, naku, wala pang text, wala pang text. Pero, alam nyo po, Si Lord nagte-text sa atin. Si Lord may text sa atin. Binabasa ba natin yung text ni Lord? Amen. Amen. Dapat basahin natin yung text ni Lord, the Bible. You know, yung yung sasabihin lang naman ng ng yung mga kabataan ngayon na, I'm sorry, but this is the truth. I need to say. Mga kabataan ngayon, they're looking always on the cell phone. I mean, they are waiting for the text from their boyfriends, from their girlfriends, or whoever they're waiting. But did they ever try to open the, the Bible up and read the message of God? Okay? That's the message for the young generations. Young generations. One thing that I will tell you this time before I will forget because it just came to my mind. The Lord is just telling me. If you are telling to yourself, and this is from the Bible study last Friday. If you're saying to yourself that you are a follower of Jesus and you don't even respect your parents. How could you tell that you're a follower of Jesus? The Lord said, respect your parents. How could you tell that you are a follower of Jesus? You always project. We always project. We are Christians. I am a born again Christian. I am a follower of Christ. And you don't even follow your parents. You can answer yourself. Okay? Number one, I, uh, I will give you some points. And again, we are talking about the title of our topic is Don't Leave your first love. Number one, a person who loves God wants to be with God. If you love the Lord, you want personal communion with Him. So, if you love the Lord, you want a personal communion with Him. You want to be talking with Him as your boyfriend, as your girlfriend, as your wife, as your husband. You want to be talking with them all the time. Kami ni Pastor, minsan may mga ano rin, pinag-uusapan kami, pinagtatawanan namin. When that moment of a husband and a wife, no more. Oh, it's not a healthy relationship anymore. When you are just talking about serious matter and no more, uh, no humor anymore in your relationship, that's not good anymore. We need to restore our love, the first love that we had before. You need to pray for yourself. For yourself first before you pray for your partner. Why? Maybe God is dealing something on you first before you will say, oh, God is dealing something with you. You need to change yourself. How about you? Okay? Hallelujah. Praise God. When you are in love with someone, you look for every excuse to be with that person. Diba? When you are in love with someone, you have always the reason or excuse na, uh, ano yung sinasabi? Uh, now this time, mahirap magtago pag nagsisinungaling kayo sa magulang ninyo o sa asawa o sa kahit na sino. Sasabihin sa inyo, sige nga, FaceTime mo nga kung nasan ka ngayon. <laughs> Di ba? Ay, huwag kayong magsisinungaling. <laughs> 
sabihin lobat. Eh kagagaling mo lang sa bahay, paano na lobat? Eh pagkagaling mo sa bahay, oy wais ang mga asawa ninyo mga babae. Tine-check yung cellphone ninyo kung ano, kung uh, fully charged. After three hours, sasabihin nyo, lobat, paano nangyaring lobat? Ah, hindi pwede yon. Walang signal? Hindi pwede dahil sinabi mo kung saan ka pupunta. Yun ang hindi ko masasagot. Kung nahulog sa CR, wala na, dapat wag mong iuwi yung cellphone dahil machi-check kung nahulog talaga o hindi. ba? Diba? Ngayon, problema mo, nahulog sa CR, hindi mo iuwi, wala kang cellphone. Ngayon, walang pambiling cellphone, edi mas lalong wala kang connection doon sa kung kanino-kaninong connection. Oo. Oh. Akala nyo ha, wais ang mga ano. <laughs> Praise God! Hallelujah! It's when you are in love with someone, you look for every excuse to be with that person. If you are in love with Jesus, you will look for every excuse, for every reason that you would be here on Sunday. Amen? Amen! Amen. Amen. You would be here whatever the reason behind, whatever invitation. You will be here. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm, God is good. God loves us so much. Amen? Hallelujah. Number two. Number two, a person who loves God loves the things God loves. Huh? God loves. Hindi God loves. Okay? A person who loves God Loves the things God loves. Ang taong nagmamahal sa Panginoon ay mahal niya rin ang minamahal ng Diyos. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Psalms oh, 119 verse 97. Psalms 119 verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. The psalmist, yung sumulat ng Psalms 119. Oh, how I love your law. Mahal na mahal ko ang iyong batas. Mahal na mahal ko ang iyong salita. Mahal na mahal ko ang mga salita mo, Panginoon. I meditate on it. All day long. Meditate the word of God. Day and night. Amen? Day and night. Day and night. When you don't have anything to think of it, if you are thinking about your problem, well, I experienced this. There's a lot of problems. But you know what? I refuse to think about the problem. I, I, I force or I... Yung, Hinihila ko, binabago ko yung nasa isip ko. I need or I want, I, my prayer is simple. Lord, I don't want what I am thinking right now. Lord, I don't like this. Lord, I don't want this. Lord, change, change. Lord, help me, help me. And then if you cannot, uh, if you cannot uh, get out from that thinking, sing a song. A praises to the Lord, a worship to the Lord until the presence of God is in you. Don't think of your problems that, oh, Lord, yung problema sa Pilipinas, whatever the problem, whatever the problem in Philippines, in here, in your, in, to your life and whatever, you know what? Only the Lord have the answer. Not your friends, not anyone but only the Lord have the answer. Amen? Hallelujah. If you love God, you will love the Bible, the Word of God. You will want to hear the Word, read the Word, and think about the Word through the day and even on your bed at night. Even on your bed at night. You will love God's people. Okay. Kailan ba yung may usapan na love your enemies? I don't remember when was that. Last week ba? Friday? 
Okay, love your enemies. Blessed are those who make peace. Blessed are those who make peace. Whatever things that your brothers and sisters uh, sin against you, still you need to love them. Learn how to forgive. Amen. Learn how to forgive. Ask the spirit of forgiveness from the Lord. Kasi I was once like that. I don't want to forgive. But I learned. Sabi ko sa Panginoon, Lord, give me the spirit of forgiveness. Give me the spirit of forgiveness. I don't want to be left alone. Because if you, if you are full of for unforgiving spirits, don't you think, yes, you are longing for the second coming of the Lord, for the rapture. But you are full. Your heart is full of unforgiving spirits. There are ni si Bienan mo, si Bayaw mo, si Hipag mo, yung kapitbahay mo. Sino pa? Kaibigan mo, katrabaho mo, dahil hindi mo magawa ang gusto mo. You cannot do what you want at your work. You hate so much your co-worker. And that is one thing. There's a lot in your, in your heart. Do you think God will, I mean, only God can judge us. But we're just talking the reality. God is looking for a pure heart. Amen? Looking unto our hearts. Praise God. Hallelujah. You will love God's people, His sons and daughters. We, the sons and daughters of the Lord. You will love lost people. Lost people. We are praying for those backsliders. Whoever they are, I am teaching, I am preaching the word of God. And the word of God will set you free from whatever circumstances that you are in now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are praying on Saturdays. We are naming names. We are calling their names. And we are praying for the lost soul. We're praying even those, those people who are just passing by in front of our church. Lord, touch their hearts that when they say, Oh God, this church, Lord, make them touch their hearts that they will come back and join the service every Sunday or call the number outside there. We are praying for those people. And also, not us, including you, brothers and sisters, you need to pray, especially for your, for your families who haven't received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. If you love God, you will love what He loves or who He loves. Hallelujah. Number three, a person who loves God will hate what God hates. A person who loves God will hate what God hates. Ang taong nagmamahal sa Diyos ay kamumuhian niya ang kinamumuhian ng Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Kamumuhian mo kung anong kinamumuhian ng Panginoon. Psalms 97 verse 10. Psalms 97 verse 10. Okay. Let those who love the Lord hate evil. For he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Okay, let's stay on the first phrase. Let those who love the Lord hate evil. If you love the Lord, you will stay away from evil. Amen? Amen? If before, we are always longing for uh, going where? Uh, I mean, sa mga men's. Alam ko, this is common. In the afternoon after work, they are going to uh, tambay in front of the house or uh, somebody's house of their uh, kumpare. And they will, what? What will happen there? Tagay! Hallelujah. So, 
If you are like that before, then I know God already changed you, brothers. God already changed you. Because let those who love the Lord hate evil. I know no man here. No man. No. To, to our men's, our tatas, whoever the men's here, no one is doing the evil of tagay-tagay anymore. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, a person who loves God will hate what God hates. Hate what is wrong. Hate. Kamuhian nyo ang mali. Hate what is wrong. Okay? Hold tightly to what is good. Even though that good is so much pain in the first place. But at the end, you know, the feelings after you become victorious to one to one uh, uh, problem you know how how uh, how beautiful is the feelings when you are like in the first place okay in the first uh, situation it's so hard uh, it's really hard to uh, deal with this is the husband and wife because you are in the process of knowing each other. You are in the process of knowing each other. First years, like five years, you're still in the process of knowing each other. You keep on fighting. You keep on fighting. But when you learn how to, how to love your husband or wife, how to learn how to accept the fact that the weakness of your partner, then, you know, when days comes, when problems comes, you will learn how to discipline yourself. When there is an argument, when there is an argument between you, wife, and your husband, you will learn how to discipline yourself. You will learn when to talk, you wife, and you also husband, you will learn when to talk. And this is, you know, Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. What, what is the, the, the relevance of hate what is wrong? Hold tightly to what is good to, uh, to husband and wife. Hate what is wrong. Fighting each other. You should hate that. Hold tightly to what is good. You need to discipline yourself. We need to learn how to, to uh, hold our feelings and then, you know, sip our uh, mouth sometimes because hold tight, tightly to what is good. Our, our, uh, when you got married, what was the, the declaration of the marriage? Huh? But ang hirap bigkasin. <laughs> Till death do us part. Ano? For, for better? Ha? Huh? For better? For better or for worse? Ano pa? For richer and poorer? Isa pa, isa pa. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Amen. That was our vow during our marriage. The covenant to each other. Di ba? Sinabi nyo yan. Sinabi natin yan. Yung mga married people. Sinabi natin yan. Hallelujah. Kaya, hold tightly to what is good. Ano yung good? Till death do us part. Kahit anong mangyari. Oh, hanggang kamatayan. Huwag ka, ma huwag ka, mamat huwag ka matay. Huwag ka Wag magkamatayan. Kundi hanggang kamatayan. Amen. Wag magkamatayan kundi hanggang kamatayan magkasama kayo. Praise the Lord. Naintindihan niyo ba sinabi ko? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ang init. Praise God. Okay. So, 
that's the thing that we should be thinking we married people and even and even here in the church we are one family Amen. hold that tightly to what is good what is good is don't neglect the fellowship with your brothers and sisters Amen. especially especially your fellowship with the lord Amen. Amen. But sometimes there's a problem. Sometimes we find ourselves fascinated by certain aspects of evil. Okay? We are drawn to it. Ulitin ko. Sometimes we find ourselves fascinated by certain aspects of evil. We are drawn to it. Perhaps first as an observer, but later as a participator. Okay. If you know that you are uh, on the uh, brink of uh, like usually these are the young the young ones. When their friends are always uh, they most of their times are with, with the unbeliever friends you know, the contribution of the worldly manner is more to them. Understand? When you are with the worldly or unbeliever, most of the time of your lives, talking with them, uh, most of the time on the cell phone, and you are longing to be with them all the time, you are just with the people of God on Sundays, do you think that the word is God has more input on you? Okay. Monday to Saturday, you are with other people, not Christians. And Sunday is the only time that you are with Christians, people, or talking to Christians, or only Sunday, only on Sunday that you are, are reading the word of God. Do you think that the impact of God is more on you? Or the impact of the world is more on you? 24 times 6 days. And on Sunday, we only have two hours service with the Lord. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we need to lessen our uh, time with other people if you know it, that they are not contributing so much good to your life. We need to be with our fellow Christians. We don't need to be uh, going to the house of the pastor to be with the Christian people. When you are, when you have something like sometimes mga marites ang pinag-uusapan, uy, si ano, naghiwalay na raw. May, nakalimutan ko yung may dagdag na kwento ng ano eh, eh dinagdagan pa eh. But sometimes we need to Instead na yun yung imarites mo, instead of that, why don't you just, sister, on Sunday, uh, uh, you know, who is the great uh, man of, uh, of uh, United States that says, or even a man of God that says, think something that you could do or contribute to the church rather than thinking that the church ano yun, can do to you. Mag-isip ka ng mga bagay-bagay na pwede mong itulong sa church and the ministry of God rather than thinking the ministry to help you. Kuha niyo yung mensahe, yung message. Think of something that you could do in the church, in the ministry of God, rather than thinking always kung ano ang maitutulong ng church sa'yo. That's how a Christian supposed to be. 
We need, because, you know, in a family, we need to help each other. You cannot always depend on your parents. Uh, you, you children, you need also to cook for your food. You children, you need also to clean the house. Not always the mother is cleaning the house. Not always the mother is cleaning or cooking and laund doing the laundry. Everything is the mother. Mother, mother, mother. Where are the children now? We need to do, we need to think something that we could also contribute sa bahay natin. Yung contribute ng trabaho. Kung, kung kaya naman natin mag-is-is dun sa, ano, sa, sa banyo, yung, yung tiles ng banyo, isang linggo yan na hindi malinisan, tingnan ninyo. Ang daming mga soap suds doon, yung ano, libag, o oh, ba diba? Marunong naman tayo mga bata na mag, ano, na mag ganon, o kaya mga tatay, hindi lang si nanay, hindi lang si asawa. Hi, praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> Walang nagsalita sa mga tatay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, amen daw. Amen. Okay. <laughs> okay? Okay. Anyway, let's go back to the topic. A person who loves God will hate what God hates. Okay? Run from evil. Don't flirt with sin. Don't have tea with the devil. Okay? Run from evil. Don't flirt with sin. Don't have tea with the devil. Huwag kayong makipagtsaa. Huwag kayong makipagtoast sa, de sa devil. Huwag kayong makipagkapi-kapihan sa devil. Amen? Amen? Dahil kung laging kapi-kapihan, kapi-kapi, ah, <laughs> magkumpare na kayo. Okay. Okay, let's proceed. Number four. Number four, a person who loves Christ will love other Christians. Okay? A person who loves Christ will love other Christians. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. If we love other Christians, it proves that we have been delivered from hell and given eternal life. But a person who doesn't have love for others is headed for eternal death. Okay? This is the word of God. Maliwanag naman siguro. We understand English. Okay? If we love other Christians, it proves that we have been delivered, delivered from hell and given eternal life. How is that? We already have a forgiving spirit. We love each other. Diba? We love our enemy. We love the makukulit people. We love the whoever the people. Okay? But a person who doesn't have love for each, for others, is headed for eternal death. That's the word of God. Okay? And uh, verse 15. Is that verse 15? Okay. Anyone who hates. Okay. That is the uh, the kabaligtaran of the 14. Anyone who hates his Christian brother is really a murderer at heart. That's why I said earlier, you have full of hatred, a murderer in at heart. And you know that no one wanting to murder has eternal life within. Okay. You know that no one Wanting to murder has eternal life within. So, 14 and 15. 14 is love your brothers and sisters, your enemies. And here, 15, ang mga hindi nagmamahal sa kanyang kapwa kristyano, ang mga hindi nagmamahal sa mga kapatiran, mm, is really a murderer at heart sa puso. God is always looking to our hearts. Amen? You might find yourself in a situation where you are in church, singing about how much you love God, when someone walks in that you really don't 
even like, okay, then where is that love now? In fact, you hate that individual and that would be a problem already. You are singing praise and worship in the church and you have something in your heart. You cannot love God and hate your brother at the same time. A scripture makes that fact abundantly. Well, we can, we can read that in the Bible, in the New Testament. You need to love your brothers and sisters so that you can project that you love Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Number five. Number five. Number five. A person who loves Christ will long for his return. Can we click on to number five, please? Number five. A person who loves Christ will long for his return. Okay? Ang taong nagmamahal kay Kristo ay hinihintay niya ang kanyang pagbabalik. Ang sa mga sa mga Pilipino, sa mga Pilipino, maraming OFWs, mga asawa, lalaki o babae na sa nasa ibang bansa. If they really love their your, their husband, or wife, they are longing for his return kung kailan magbabakasyon. Pero kung hindi na nila mahal, hindi na nila hinihintay dahil may iba na. In Jesus' name. Ito is the same. A person who loves Christ will long for his return. If we love Jesus, we will long for his return. Not aiming for like I need to have more money. I need to work three works, I mean jobs, and to have more money, to have a house, to have a Tesla, to have a, what else? House na nga, kuya, apartment. <laughs> okay, so we are longing for his return. Kailangan yun ang hintayin natin, ang pagbabalik ng Diyos. ng ating Panginoon. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous, the righteous God, judge, I mean, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Sabi ni Paul, and now the prize awaits me, ang corona. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which is the Lord. The righteous judge will give me on the day of his return. The Lord Jesus will give the crown of righteousness to Apostle Paul when he returns. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Okay. The prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward For his appearing. Remember, number six, a person who loves Christ will long for his return. Okay? Will long for his return. So the prize, the prize will be given unto you when the Lord comes. When the Lord raptures everyone who believe on him. Amen? Amen. Number six. A person who loves Christ will keep his commandments. In uh, John 14, 21, John 14:21, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved my, by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. It is he who loves me. The Lord said, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be. Seek ye first. Unahin natin ang Panginoon, ang kanyang kalooban at ang kanyang katuwiran. Amen? Amen? And the commandments of the Lord. Whatever the commandments in the Bible, righteousness, love your parents, love your brothers and sisters, love your enemies. You know, the first command in the Bible is love. Amen? Love. Ang hirap, di ba? Minsan. But we need to learn how to love each other. Okay? Number six. Ah? Number seven na? Okay. A final warning. Okay. A final warning. In the, we need to uh, uh, pay attention to our Lord's warning at the end of the letter to the Ephesus. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Can we just go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 5? Okay. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Remember, we read this earlier in the first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand, lampstand from its place. The primary application here is to the church, okay? But I just uh, told you earlier about individual. The primary application here is to the church because in the book of Revelation, a lampstand symbolizes the church. A lampstand. Okay. A lampstand. Kunwari ito may ilaw. Okay. A lampstand symbolizes the church. This is a reminder that no single church has a guarantee that it will continue to uh, to indefinite to indefinitely so ang church uh, uh, i will go back to individual if our light as christians if our uh, if we are not uh, like lighting up anymore if uh, our burn our fire is not burning our fire to the lord is not burning I think we need to go back and think about our first love. We need to go back to our first love. Amen? Hallelujah. No individual or government will ever stop the Christ church. Okay. Kayo, tayo. Walang gobyerno o walang individual kahit sino ang makakapag-stop sa atin in serving the Lord. In serving the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. No matter how hard or how brutally they try. Because now, brothers and sisters, we need to read the Bible. Read, read, read the Bible. Because the Bible, hallelujah, is the word of God. If it's already in our hearts, if the Bible, the Word of God, is already in our hearts, then no one can get rid of that. Kahit kunin na nila ang lahat ng Biblia, sunugin, dahil they're doing it now. Sunugin ang lahat ng Biblia, burning the Bibles. But if the Word of God is in our heart, written in our heart, no one can take that away from us. Amen? We need to read the Bible. We need to read. That's our weapon in this world. That's our weapon. Not our money. Not whatever that we have, but the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, there are some, okay. There are some, in New York, there is a church building that had been turned into a nightclub. Imagine, church building, church talaga, 
a big church in New York was turned already into a nightclub now. So they're using into other things. You know, the, the, the lampstand because of the, of the callousness of the heart. Nagkalyo na ang puso ng mga miyembro. Hindi na bago. Inalis ng Panginoon ang lampstand. And what's happening? What happened to the church? It is now a nightclub. Brothers and sisters, our church is for the Lord. Amen? Amen! Commission for Christ Fellowship is for the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. There was a place where God used to be worshipped, that church. And now it's a place of other things to worship. And who they are worshipping now? It's the devil. In Wales, in uh, uh, Wales, in uh, England, England, okay. The home of the great Welsh revival, this is a church. You can see old stone churches that are now stuffed full of hay and being used as barns. So now, yung malaking church in Wales before, now they are using as a uh, imbakan of haze. What is haze? Dayami. Okay, dayami. Uh, imbakan ng haze and being used as barns. Imagine a church if, brothers and sisters, we need to pray each other. We need to pray each other. And I know, I do believe, the church commission for Christ fellowship is for the Lord. Is for the Lord. No heart here is hard. It is soft. And it is for the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. If a church or any church neglects God's word, it stops loving him as they did at first, it stops influencing and impacting lives for Jesus and begins to compromise on the truth, they are in danger of losing their light in a community. I will repeat. If any church neglects the word of God, number one, it stops loving him as they did at first, number two, in number three, it stops influencing and impacting lives for Jesus. Nag-stop na tayong mag-share ng word of God. And begins to compromise on the truth. Medyo hindi na tayo sumusunod sa salita ng Panginoon. Now, that church is in danger of losing their light in the community. Hallelujah. The Lord may remove their lampstand. But when that happens, God raises up another church and another church. Okay? When one church, God will remove the lampstand, the spirit of the Lord will be removed from that place, and the church will raise up another church. Brothers and sisters, Commission for Christ Fellowship will stand for the Lord. Amen? Amen. And last, number eight. Don't lose your light. Don't lose your light. Okay. Wag nyong uh, iwala. Iwan. Hindi iwala. Wag nyong hayang mawala ang inyong mga ilaw. Okay. If you lose your love for Jesus, it's only a matter of time until you lose your light. Okay. Kung hindi nyo mahal si Jesus, kung hindi nyo na mahal si Jesus, it's just only a matter of time. Just a short time. At yung ilaw mo bilang Kristiyano ay mawawala na. Amen? Like, uh, when you are surrounded Surrounded, you know, there is. Uh, well, this is a very common story to all to some Christians. If you are surrounded by people 
that they don't like to go to church, but you want to go to church, and you alone standing there, you will be, uh, you know, you will go along with them. Kasi hindi mo na maidepend sa yung sarili mo. You are surrounded with other thinkings of people. Even though they are Christians, but they are not already, their hearts is not already for Jesus. And you alone standing in the middle of them. Believe me, brothers and sisters, 99%, you will go along with them. If you are not going to cling to Jesus, if you are not going to hold tight for the truth, for Jesus, it's just a matter of short time to lose your light. It's just a very short time. But you need to fight for the truth. Amen? For Jesus. This is true on a personal level as well. Y yun sinabi ko. Personal level. You can lose the radiance and beauty of Christ in your life if you continue to compromise and neglect your walk with Jesus. You can lose your radiance and beauty in Christ in your life, if you continue to compromise and neglect your walk with Jesus. Okay. Huwag natin kalimutan. Don't neglect to walk with Jesus. Don't neglect to read the Bible, to, uh, to, uh, to pray, to have conversation with the Lord. You know, praying is not, is not really a... Uh, Praying is not really uh, like if you if you consider that the father is really your father, you will talk to him as as you talk to your father. Because sometimes I I talk to the father, I talk to Jesus like Lord, uh, pupunta ako doon sa kliente. Pupunta ako doon sa ganito. Lord, samahan mo ko ako. Kasama kita. Ikaw ang lawyer ko. Ikaw naman laging lawyer ko. You will defend me. You will put you, the words that I supposed to utter in front of these people. You know, you will talk to them as yung, yung tatay mo. Kung hindi ka sana makakapunta doon sa pupuntahan mo, natatakot ka, sasabihin mo sa tatay mo, sa nanay mo, samahan nyo naman ako. Parang ganon. Ganon. I-consider nyo ganon si Jesus. The, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, samahan mo ako. Ikaw ang kasama ko. You know? Don't always say na yung prayer ay yung... yung ang iba kasi, kinukonsider nila ang prayer na para bang... Uh, we need to be serious in prayer, but sometimes uh, we need a casual conversation. Okay? A casual conversation with the Lord as you talk to your father or your mother, to your friend. A casual conversation with the Lord. Kasi sometimes, we only talk to Jesus when we pray. In the morning and at night. That's our prayer. But during the day, from morning up to the night, you know, it's a casual conversation. Lord, let's eat. Oh, casual conversation. Kain na tayo, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, diba? It's a casual conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you, when, you, uh, when you're not walking with the Lord, you will lose your light and you will no longer be the light that you once were stood or you were once standing in the middle of the people. Like in school, in family, at work, or in your neighborhood. If you lose your light, as a Christian, you will no longer the light that once you were stood in your school, in your family, at work, or in your neighborhood. My family, I, I receive a lot of persecutions. I heard a lot of persecutions for my being a follower of Christ from my family. And uh, just recently, you know, one of my family, he said, Nasan yung kapatid mo na praise the Lord, praise the Lord? Imagine niyo, But you know what? God is my God. 
The Father in heaven is my God. He will defend me. They're going, God in heaven will show to them that the God I'm serving is really the Savior. Amen? Amen. One day, magpapakilala ang Diyos ko sa Kanya. Nasaan yung kapatid mo na praise the Lord, praise the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. At least, ako, ginagawa kong positive, I make it positive. At least, they know that I'm praising the Lord. How about them? Are they praising God? No. At least they know I'm praising God. Where's your, where's your sister? Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. But I thank God. Kasi dati, no, uh, when I was not yet matured, nahihiya na ako. Nahihiya na ako. I feel so ashamed or I feel so shy in, in looking on them because I'm a born again Christian. But now, I don't care. Hallelujah. That's how you feel, brothers and sisters. That's supposed to be how you feel with others. Whatever persecutions, it's okay. It's okay. The important thing here is your salvation. They're not going to give you your salvation. Jesus will give you your salvation. Amen. Praise God. In uh, Revelation chapter 3, Verse 1 to 6. Can we have that, please? Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. This is about the church of uh, Sardis. Okay? Verse 1. To the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds, says the Lord. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Imagine you, brothers and sisters. God said, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Do you want to be like that. You have the reputation of being alive. Buhay ka pa, pero patay ka na. Paano yun? Patay ka in spirit. You are alive. You are beautiful. You are kicking. You are so energetic. But you are dead in your heart. But before, they are also, they love Jesus also. I know you're dead. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Verse 2, please. Wake up! Sabi ng Panginoon, wake up! Hallelujah! Wake up! Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Wake up! For those who are like uh, cold in their hearts, not really loving God anymore. God said this time, this morning, wake up. Amen. Wake up. Hallelujah. Strengthen what remains is about to die. There's something in you still. If you were once here in the music ministry, come back to the Lord. Amen. Come back to the Lord. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. It's going to die if you are not going to serve the Lord. Amen? For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of God. Hindi pa natatapos ang tungkulin mo sa Panginoon. Come back to the Lord. Wake up and come back to the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Verse 3, remember therefore what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. The very first time you were so, you were so energetic, you were so very, uh, uh, I mean, concerned about your ministry. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, there's 
there's a warning of the Lord. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I will come to you. If you don't repent and wake up and come back to the Lord, the Lord said, I will come like a thief. Bigla na lang darating ang Panginoon and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Verse 4. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not sold their clothes. Okay. Hindi pa lahat ay soiled. Maruming mga tao. They will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy. Okay. Five. Verse 5. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. Remember, I will never blot out. I will never delete. I will never erase the name of that person in the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. So therefore, sinabi ng Panginoon, I will never erase or blot out or delete, delete the name of that person in the book of life. Remember, our names written in the book of life. Written in the book of life. But, sabi ng Panginoon, I will never erase. So therefore, nai-erase din pala ang pangalan natin. Therefore, nai-erase din pala ang pangalan natin sa book of life. Naintindihan natin? Sabi ng Panginoon, I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life. But I will acknowledge that name before my father and angels. For those who are victorious following the word of God. Amen? But the name of that person who did not wake up and did not repent and did not go back to the ministry, remember the Lord. He can still, He can also erase the name of that person. Hallelujah. If we don't go back to the Lord, the Lord can erase our names in the book of life. Hallelujah. And this is the conclusion. The good news is this. It doesn't have to be that way. Hindi dapat ganun ang mangyari. Yung, uh, yung coldness natin. Jesus gives us the opportunity to return to Him with a full heart and experience full restoration. Remember, God, Jesus, is a God of chances. Our Lord and Savior is our God of chances. He is giving you, brothers and sisters, for those who are watching and is going to watch, God is giving us chances to go back to the ministry of the Lord. Amen? And He is going to restore our hearts fully and that process will start today. That process will start today. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we sing that song, Katapatan Mo O Dios, before we, uh, we uh, go to our uh, closing prayer? Give me 
wakas at walang kapantay sa aming puso sa aming your Holy Spirit. Father, forgive us for once in our lives. Madalas, Panginoon, Lord, we cannot perform. We cannot tell, oh God, that we love you. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us, O oh God, that sometimes, Lord, 
we forget that you, Father, you are longing on us. You're longing, Lord, to communicate with us. You're longing, oh God, na Lord, kausapin ka namin. But seems, Lord, sometimes malayo kami, Panginoon. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. And Lord, help us to walk with you. Help us, Lord, nagawin ang mga dapat naming gawin bilang anak mo. Help us, Lord, to perform the task of God that you put on our shoulder. To do it on the ministry, Lord, nagawin namin yung mga ministry na ipinagkatiwala mo sa amin, Panginoon. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, na magawa ang mga dapat namin gawin. Hallelujah. Lord, we can't do anything. We can do nothing, Lord, apart from you. We can do nothing without the presence of your Holy Spirit, without the strength, without the knowledge, without the wisdom that comes from you, Lord. This morning, oh God, thank you for your for the for the teaching, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Pinaalala mo sa amin. You reminded us again, Lord that we need to go back. We need to go back to our first love. We need to go back as a child. Loving you so much, Lord. And Lord, following you, we need to go back as children that always longing for the presence of their parents. We want to go back to that Spirit, oh God, we want to go back on the first time, like the first time, oh Lord, that we receive you as our Lord and Savior. Help us, Lord. Help us. Lord, we thank you that today, Lord, you reminded us how much you love us. You don't want us to be left alone. You don't want us, Lord, na maiwan sa rapture. Because we know, we do believe, oh God, it's already in front of us. It's already, oh God, in front of our faces. The signs, oh God, that your second coming is, Lord, very, very soon. And Lord, you reminded us, we need to go back to our first love. For us, oh God, to be, Lord, like the children that you love before, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, we want, we want to be cradled by your arms, oh God, like children. We want to be cradled on your arms, oh God, like the children. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you so much, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord, thank you so much again for, Lord, giving us this message that again reminded the pride that we have now, Lord, we need to submit unto you. Forgive us. Forgive us. We don't want this spirit, Lord, the spirit of pride. We want to humble ourselves before you, Lord. We want to humble ourselves before you. Lord, ibaba mo kami, Panginoon, at ikaw ang maitaas sa aming mga buhay. Ikaw ang maitaas sa aming mga buhay, Panginoon. Hindi kami, Panginoon Diyos. Lord, take full control of our lives. Take full control in everything that we have, in every area of our lives, our families, our, uh, our employment, everything, oh God, that we have. Take full control, Lord and we submit our lives unto you, including our families, especially this church, Lord. This church belongs to you, Jesus. This church belongs to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.